Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. We're going to have a big surprise for you tonight, so we're going to hurry right on down to Pine Ridge and Lum and Abner. First, though, I'd like to say something to all you boys and girls who are listening. You know, I have a little girl of my own, just about the same age as most of you youngsters. Well, you know what she likes more than anything in the world? A glass of Horlicks chocolate malted milk. She just loves Horlicks, thinks it's the best tasting drink she's ever had. Well, I'll bet that she drinks four or five glasses of Horlicks every day. Her mother and I like to have her drink it, too. For we know Horlicks will help her to grow up big and strong. Well, what I wanted to tell you was this. I know that every one of you boys and girls, if you try Horlicks, will like it just as much as my little girl does. Why don't you ask mother or dad to buy you some? I know they'll be glad to get you a package of Horlicks the next time they go to the drugstore. Now, all you boys and girls, and you grown-ups, too, be sure and listen to the closing announcement tonight. I'm going to have a big surprise for you. Can't tell you about it just now, though, so be sure and listen later. Well, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner have secured the agency for a pocket flashlight and have written Mr. Horlick to try and interest him in using a large quantity of them in an advertising campaign. The old fellows are trying to raise enough cash to reopen their Jotham down store. Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today... We find Lum down at their old store building, which is now being used as headquarters for their matrimonial bureau. Abner, who has been confined to his bed since pretending to have had both arms broken in an automobile accident, is just entering the store for the first time since Lum conceived the idea of the fake accident. Listen. Well, for goodness sakes, Abner, what in the world are you doing out? I know that I got tired of laying up there in that bed. I decided to get out and stir around a little. Yeah, and Elizabeth will just about find out you ain't sure enough hurt, and then we will be into it. Well, now, Lum, ain't no use for me to just lay up in bed just because my arms is broke. Yeah, but you get up and around this way, and you're liable to forget that your arms ain't really hurt and give yourself away. Oh, no, no, I'm watching that mighty close, huh? <laughs> I got my hands all wrapped up, too, so that I won't forget and pick up nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you've been in a wreck, all right. Well, I feel like it, too. I talked about these arms being broke and how bad they hurt till they sure enough got to aching. Hmm. Maybe Cedric got them bandages wrapped a little too tight on there, stopped to circulate. Well, I don't know, but they pained me so bad last night I couldn't hardly sleep. This might as well have been broke. It couldn't have hurt me no worse. Yeah. Well, let me sit down, Lum. I laid up there in that bed till I'm just as weak as a kitten. Yeah, sure, sure. Draw yourself up a chair and sit. Well, uh... I reckon I'll have to get you to move a chair for me now. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a nuisance having both arms broke. Yeah, it is. Well, it has to be weighted on hand and foot. Yeah, it's a shame it had that. Your arms ain't broke. What's the matter with you? Well, no, but I, I got to make out like that. No, you don't have to make out like it around me. You ain't fooling me none. Well, Lom, with, with my arms rocked up this way, I can't do nothing for myself. I can't pick up nothing. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. I was just uh, sort of wondering, Lum, if you'd mind to fill up my pipe with tobacco there. All right. Where is it at? In, in my coat pocket, uh, left-hand side there. Yeah, right in there. That's it. For goodness sake. What all you got in here? I don't know. Elizabeth put all my stuff in there a while ago. My knife and keys and one thing or another. <laughs> Worse than some schoolboy about carrying stuff in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> here. Yeah. Much obliged. All right, now... If you put my pipe in my mouth and light it for me, Lama. <laughs> Looks to me like you'd quit smoking while you're crippled up this way, Abner. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Mom, I reckon you could sort of lift my hat off and set it over on the counter. Lift your hat off? Yeah, Elizabeth put it on for me a while ago, and it's about to worry me to death. Mm. That's just one thing I can't stand is for somebody else to put my hat on for me. They never get it all right, looks like. Don't feel comfortable. All right. Now, if you're settled, I'll get back to work here. Yeah, uh, what are you doing there, Long? I've been sorting out some of this mail to the matrimonial bureau. Oh, still writing in, are they? <laughs> oh, yeah. The matrimonial bureau's fine if we're just making any money out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's an interesting letter, Abner. Read that. Yeah. Uh, 
would you mind to reach in my inside coat pocket here along and get my spectacles and set them on my nose for me? Hmm. Who ever thought of this idea of having both your arms broke anyway? Why, you thought of that, don't you know, Ron? <laughs> I know that it sure worked all right, too. It's working too good. Here. Hold still. Now, I don't believe we could have figured out a better way to get Elizabeth back in a good humor with me. Uh, and where's that letter? Oh, oh, yeah. This in here. From Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, Columbus, Ohio. Well, you have to hold it up in front of my eyes, Lum, so that I can read it. Uh, never that. mind. Just let it go. Just let the letter go. Weren't nothing important, no way. Why? Well, if I ain't going to read it, why? <laughs> you may as well take these spectacles off, and Just leave them on there. Well, all right, I just hate to wire them out when I ain't looking at nothing. Well, Abner, I can't spend all my time waiting on you. If you think I'm going to play nursemaid for you, you just got another guest coming. I've got work to do here. Yeah, well, uh, before you start in on that, Lama, <laughs> would you mind to, to light my pipe up again for me? And I wish you'd had both your legs broke, steady arms. Here, now. Keep puffing on it. Yeah. You let it go out again, it'll just have to stay out. Yeah, much obliged. Yeah. Ah, that's better. <laughs> hope your arms as well by the time we get our store opened up again. Yeah, I just hope we get the store opened up by the time our arms get well. That's what I hope. If Elizabeth finds out that we let Squire Skimp beat us out of that store alone, we'll both be crippled up. Well, if this flashlight proposition works out, we'll have a new stock of goods here in a couple of weeks. I believe them things are going like hotcakes. Yeah, I believe they are too, Tom. If we can sell enough of them to get our store opened up again, and by that time our matrimonial business is on a paying base, we'll be back on your feet again. Yeah. Well, if we can just get the store open, that's the main thing. We know we can't starve to death as long as we got a stock of groceries in here. No. And if the worst comes to the worst, why, we can just eat the store, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we didn't know when we was well off, did we? Why, no. Had the store and making a little money out of it. If we'd just stayed with it, why, we'd have been all right. Yeah, trying to get rich quick. That's it. Squire Skim come along with his big sounding talk and made us unsatisfied with what we had. Guess what he done. <laughs> Looked like everything we touched went right backers to what it ought to. Oh, law, we've had a run of hard luck that just might not ruin us long. Yeah. More than likely, it'll be good for us in the long run. Get some of these big ideas out of our head. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if we can get our store back now, we'll appreciate it more. Why, well, sure. Uh, we, well, <laughs> there comes Dick Huddleston. Yeah. And he's sure been a friend to us, ain't he? Oh, yeah. I don't know what we would have did, but had them in for him. Been letting me have groceries down there at his store on a credit just to keep Elizabeth from finding out that we lost our store. Yeah. But they can all us lean again, Dick, in time of trouble. Oh, yeah. Must be some more mail for our matrimony bureau he's bringing on. Yeah, I'm on. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick. Well, how are you fellas today? No, just fine. Come on back. Well, Abner, I didn't know you was able to be up and around. Well, you oughtn't to be. Yeah, I just got tired of laying over in bed. Come down here and expect me to wait on him hand and foot. <laughs> well, how are your arms feeling, Abner? Oh, they're all right, I reckon, Dick. I right, say, Dick, would you mind to light my pipe for me here? I don't want to ask Lum to do it again. He got sort of aggravated at me. Oh, oh sure, sure. Just let it uh, stay out. Lum, here's some mail for you here. There's one special delivery letter in the bunch there, too. Well, I do know. Hey, <laughs> special deliver. Reckon somebody must be in a turbo. Well, it's a letter from Mr. Horlick, Abner. Huh? <laughs> Granny, he answered right back, didn't he? Yeah, open it up and see if he take me up on that proposition, Lum. Yeah. You fellas on deal with Mr. Horlick? Yeah, me and Abner got the agency for these flashlights, and we wrote Mr. Horlick to see if he couldn't use a bunch of them in an advertising campaign of some kind. Here's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a sounding pen, don't it? Say, that's all right, isn't it? Well, that's about as handy a gadget as I ever saw. Well, sir, them things will throw a beam 200 foot. Yeah, now that is a dandy. Say, that, that's nice for a fellow to have along with him all the time, you know. Like a fountain pen, you can just put it in your pocket there and... Always there when you need it. Be out in the car at night or something like that. Why, sure. Yeah, it's the handiest thing in the world. Young and they get a lot of fun out of that, too. It looks like silver. No, oh, it's uh, polished aluminum, as Lom said it was. Well, you know, I'd like to have one of these myself, Abner. <laughs> What's that, Dick? I'd say I'd like to have one of these flashlights well, here, Lom. Granny, you can get one of them. Listen to this. Here's that letter. Mr. Lum Edwards and Abner Peabody. Yeah. Dear sirs. That's us. I received your letter. Also, the aluminum... Aluminum pocket size flashlight which you sent me. It is a very attractive and useful article, and I am so enthused over it that I am going to send one as a gift to all users of Horlick's malted milk. Yeah, 
Well, I do. To anyone who sends you the wrapper of a bottle of Horlicks malted milk powder, I authorize you to send them one of these handy flashlights with my compliments. Well, that's nice. In this way, it will be to your advantage to distribute as many as possible. Please accept my sincere thanks for your interest in Horlicks. I am confident that your enterprise will be successful and that the Jotham Down store will soon be reopened to the public. Sincerely, William Horlicks. Well, good for him. <laughs> well, say now, that's my Well, nice. I know they do it. I just know it. You know, they're nice enough to mail out our Pine Ridge news first, and I just know they do this. Well, sir, that's as nice a gift as I ever saw. And, Granny, I'm going to make an announcement on the party line right this minute. Tell all our friends how they can get go about getting one of these flashlights. Yeah, just tell all the folks that wrote in for the Pine Ridge news, Mom, that we've got something else for them now. I'll <laughs> tell everybody. Everybody. Men, oh, women, and children. That's a nice gift. I'll man. tell them that they, if they ain't got some Horlicks in the house, to go out and buy some. So we can get some of these roppers in here. That's the time. The more of them roppers they send in, the more of these flashlights we can send out. And the more flashlights we send out, the quicker we can get our jot them down store open up again. Why, sure. Get sure. them sure. in the folks listen. Yeah. Uh, howdy, everybody. This is Lum Edwards talking. I've got an important announcement to make. Yes. You folks out on the party line have been awful good about writing to me and Abner. And oh, yeah. We never have called on you yet that you ain't exponded. Not a time. We try not to impose none on your friendship, and, and that's why we don't hesitate a minute to ask all of our friends to write in for one of these flashlights the Horlicks Malted Milk Company is going to give away. All you've got to do is to send your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a bottle of Horlicks Malted Milk Powder and mail it to me and Abner, and we'll see that you get one of these handy little flashlights. Well, it's true, folks. Mr. Horlick is going to give one of these aluminum pocket flashlights complete with bulb and batteries to every user of Horlick's Malted Milk Powder. Now, here's how you can get one. To let us know you are a user of Horlick's Malted Milk, send us the wrapper from a package, any size, of Horlick's Malted Milk Powder. Remember, it must be Horlick's Malted Milk Powder. Wrappers from packages of Horlick's tablets are not eligible. Well, on the back of this Horlick's Malted Milk wrapper, write your name and your address, and then send it with 10 cents enclosed, that's just to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight, which is a regular 75-cent value, to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. I repeat that for you folks to make sure that you've all got it correctly. Send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder with your name and address and with 10 cents enclosed. Mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Then... The makers of Horlicks will send you one of these handsome aluminum flashlights, complete with bulb and batteries. Every one of you I know will want one of those powerful little flashlights. Send in for yours tonight. You can get Horlicks, you know, either natural or chocolate flavor, at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.